Welcome everybody to the next video in our series on parabolas. And so today we'll be looking at converting from the factored form to vertex form. So just as a little bit of a reminder what factored form looks like and kind of what we get from the geometry of that. Um, let's suppose that we've got this situation here where Somebody gives us factored form that looks like y is equal to a times the quantity x minus p times x minus q. Well, in this particular form, we've got a telling us whether our parabola is opening up or down, and then p and q being the values of our x-intercepts. So if we were looking at the graph and where that parabola is going to cross the x-axis, those should be our values for p and q. Now kind of the important thing to remember about that um, in converting from factored form to vertex form is that the x-intercepts are going to be symmetric on either side of the axis of symmetry. So I've got the same distance over here to the right um, from the axis of symmetry as I do from the axis of symmetry over to the left x-intercept. So what that tells us is that if I happen to know exactly what the x-intercepts are, then the axis of symmetry is going to be the midpoint between those two values. And so how do we go about finding the midpoint? Well, we do something called the average. And the average is really found by adding the two values together and then dividing by two. So if P and Q are the values for my x-intercepts, I add them together, divide by two, and that's going to tell me where my axis of symmetry is going to be. Now, something else that the axis of symmetry gives me is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And so if I've got the x-coordinate, um, I've got my original equation, and so all I really need to do then is to plug in the x-coordinate of the vertex in for the x-value, and then that'll let me find the y-value of the vertex. So let's look at an example. Suppose somebody gives us an equation y is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 3 times x minus 9. Well, a little bit of a review, we're seeing that our a value is going to be 2. And so since 2 is going to be positive, that tells us that our parabola is going to open up. Then for the x-intercepts, or the roots, that we're actually trying to find, um, we let y be 0, and so that's going to give us an equation, 0 is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 3 times x minus 9. Well, remembering back to the zero factor property, if I've got two things, the x minus 3 being one thing, and the x minus 9 being the other thing, if I'm multiplying two quantities together, and that's 0, well, the only way that can happen is for one of those quantities to have been 0. So I'm either going to have x minus 3 is equal to 0, or x minus 9 is equal to 0. Well, if x minus 3 is 0, I know what that answer is. It's just going to be x equal to 3. If x minus 9 is going to be 0, I've got an answer of x equal to 9. So my x-intercepts are going to be at 3 and 9. So one thing that we can kind of do to see is, all right, is our intuition correct? Um, are our calculations correct and are our conclusions true about what this parabola looks like? Well, if we go over to GeoGebra, then we can plot this parabola and see what it's going to look like. So if I plug in y is equal to 2 times our quantity x minus 3 times x minus 9, I'm going to get a parabola that looks something like this. Well, if I scoot it over a little bit, I'm seeing that, yes, I do, in fact, have x-intercepts here at 3 and 9, exactly the way that I thought that it should be. Um, as for the um, vertex value, so if I kind of shrink that coordinate axis, just a little bit, now I see that I do have this parabola, so my axis of symmetry had better be halfway in between here. So let's go back and kind of make that calculation and see where that's going to be. So for the axis of symmetry, 
I take my two roots that I found, namely three and nine, and I take the average of those. So I go, x is going to be three plus nine divided by two. Well, three plus nine is going to give me 12. 12 divided by two is six. And so my axis of symmetry should be here at x is equal to six. Well, if I go back to GeoGebra and I plot the line, x is equal to 6, then what happens if we kind of change those properties a little bit, kind of make that dash so it's a little easier to see, then yeah, sure enough, that, vert that um, vertical line is running halfway down, is running right through the middle of my parabola. So I can visually see there that my axis of, axis of symmetry is in fact going to be at six. Three units to the right, I've got one x-intercept, and three units to the left, I've got another x-intercept. Okay. So now what about the vertex? Well, if x is gonna be six, that's the x-coordinate of the vertex, I can find the y-coordinate by plugging six into the equation. So I've got y is equal to 2 times 6 minus 3 times 6 minus 9. Well, 6 minus 3 is going to give me 3. 6 minus 9 is going to give me negative 3. I get kind of the same magnitude but opposite signs. That's an indication that, yeah, I've done, I've kind of made this calculation correctly because I'm going three units, three steps to the right for one x-intercept and three steps to the left for the other x-intercept. So if I go two times three times negative three, two times three is six, six times negative three gives me negative 18, and so I end up with a vertex of six negative 18, and I get a vertex form of y is equal to two times x minus six quantity squared minus 18. And that's going to be my vertex form. Well, if I go back over to GeoGebra one more time, and if I plot my point, 6, negative 18, for that value, where do I end up? Well, down here, where the parabola changes direction, and on my axis of symmetry. So I've actually found, um, found my vertex, and I've rewritten this equation into vertex form, namely y is equal to 2 times the quantity x minus 6 squared minus 18. So let's look at one more example from there. So suppose somebody gives us y is equal to negative 3 times the quantity x plus 2 times x minus 5. Well, Again, a is going to be negative 3, and since it's a is going to be negative, I know that my parabola is going to open down in that case. Then finding the x-intercepts, or the roots of that equation, I let y be 0, and so that's going to give me an equation 0 is equal to negative 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 5. Well, again, the zero factor property tells me that I can set each factor equal to zero <coughs> so that I get x plus two is equal to zero and x minus five is equal to zero. Well, if x plus two is zero, it tells me that one x-intercept is gonna be at negative two. If x minus five is zero, it tells me the other x-intercept is gonna be there at five. Okay. So now let's see if we've actually made these calculations correctly. So let's go over to GeoGebra and we can get rid of those parabolas. We don't need those anymore. And so we are graphing y is equal to negative 3 times our quantity. Um, what was our equation? x plus 2 times x minus 5. So y is equal to negative 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 5. Oops, x minus 5 there. Don't need that line anymore. Okay, so sure enough, if I kind of 
zoom in just a little bit so let's shrink that axis so we can see that yeah we do have a parabola kind of move everything over a little bit then first thing that we are noticing is that yes um, our parabola is opening down and we are crossing the x-axis here at negative 2 and we're crossing the x-axis at 5 exactly where we thought that we should have crossed so now let's see if we can find the axis of symmetry from that well again the vertex is going to be halfway in between negative 2 and 5 and so we find the halfway point by taking the sum of our x-intercepts and dividing it by 2. So we've got x is equal to negative 2 plus 5 divided by 2. Well, negative 2 plus 5 is going to give us 3. So our axis of symmetry is going to be here at x is equal to 3 halves. So if I go over to GeoGebra and I plot that line, x is equal to 3 halves, where do I end up? There, let's make that thing dashed as well. Then I get a vertex that's running halfway down the middle here at um, halfway in between our x-intercepts. So it looks like I've got the proper vertex or the proper axis of symmetry in there. And so now what about the vertex? Well, if x is going to be 3 halves, then that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. The y-coordinate of the vertex, I can get by just plugging in those values. And so what happens, I've got y is equal to negative 3 times 3 halves plus 2 and 3 halves minus 5. Well, kind of getting common denominators there, um, 2 being 4 over 2. So 3 over 2 plus 4 over 2 gives me 7 over 2. Um, getting a common denominator here, I've got 3 halves minus 10 halves. Well, 3 minus 10 is going to give me a negative 7 over 2 for that value. So again, I know I've kind of done these things um, properly because I've got one positive value, one negative value. They're the same magnitude but opposite signs that's an indication of my symmetry that I have here and so if I've got negative 3 times 7 halves times a negative 7 halves is going to give me 147 over 4 and so for my vertex I've got 3 halves and 147 over 4 my vertex form is then y is equal to negative 3 times our quantity x minus 3 halves squared plus 147 over 4. And so if I go to GeoGebra now and plot that point, 3 halves and 147 over 4, let's see where that is. So if I plot 3 halves and 147 over 4, sure enough, where does that point end up? Here at the top of my parabola, so where my parabola changes direction, and on that axis of symmetry. So I sure enough have found the um, found the vertex for that parabola using my x-intercepts. And so um, hopefully this has kind of walked you through a couple of examples of converting a parabola from factored form to vertex form. So I hope you've enjoyed this. It'll help you to get a little bit further on your homework, and I will see you guys next time.